As we reported earlier, congressional Democrats today escalated a, escalated a legal fight with the Trump administration over the U.S. Census, voting to hold Attorney General William Barr and U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross in contempt of Congress. At issue, the intent of the administration's move to include a citizenship question in the nationwide survey, which is done every 10 years. Democratic Representative Jerry Connolly of Virginia blasted the motive behind the question. While in the Oval Office today, President Trump defended the additional question. I think it's totally ridiculous that we would have a census without asking. But the Supreme Court is going to be ruling on it soon. I think when a census goes out, you should find out whether or not, and you have the right to ask whether or not somebody is a citizen of the United States. The citizenship question is not just a normal question. By the way, it hasn't been asked in the census since 1950, the year I was born, for a reason. Because it's going to intimidate and discourage. And it has to be seen in a context, the context of an anti-immigrant policy coming out of this White House. Hansi Lo Wang covers the census for NPR, and he joins us from New York. Welcome back to the News Hour. So, Hansi, what we've got going here, we have the president saying that it, that it is perfectly the right of, of the administration to ask uh, whether people are citizens or not on the, on the census. But then separately, you have claims that there is evidence that the administration was, was adding this question for political reasons and then trying to cover it up. Right. We, there are recently disclosed documents that the plaintiffs in one of the New York-based lawsuits over the citizenship question they point to. These are from the hard drives of a GOP redistricting strategist, Thomas Hoffler. He died last year. His estranged daughter came over, uh, came across these hard drives. They include files that the plaintiffs here are saying suggest that Hoffler was involved in crafting the administration's push for the citizenship question. Hoffler concluded that adding a citizenship question to the census could politically benefit Republicans and non-Hispanic white people by using responses to that question to reach all political maps after the 2020 census. And so this is a major dispute uh, between the Trump administration and the plaintiffs. The Trump administration, of course, says this is about protecting the voting rights of racial minorities. So Hoffler, North Carolina political strategist who passed away, his daughter was able to get access to this information. How is that, though, connected to, to the Trump administration? Well, the plaintiffs here are saying that Hoffler uh, possibly ghost wrote one of the early requests to the Justice, uh, to the Census Bureau to request a citizenship question because the plaintiffs found a paragraph word for word uh, that appeared in Hoffler's files as well as in an early request for a citizenship question that the Trump administration was preparing. And so they say that he, that shows that Hoffler was involved and also that Hoffler helped come up with a strategy uh, for using the Voting Rights Act as a rationale for justifying the addition of a citizenship question. And the administration is, is uh, whatever these documents are, the administration is saying we're not going to turn them over. Well, the documents that the administration uh, is protecting right now and invoking executive privilege over, these are internal emails and memos uh, within the Justice Department and also the Commerce Department. And uh, the Democrats on the House Oversight Committee say they want to see all the documents. Uh, they want to see unredacted versions. And, you know, one of these emails uh, helped reveal that uh, this question, this request for a question, started months earlier than the administration was saying initially. Uh, they said that this was initiated by the Justice Department. But one of these emails, the unredacted portions show, that Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross said he had a months-long request for this question shortly after he was confirmed as Commerce Secretary. So, Hansi, let's talk about what, what's at stake here, because there's a, the, the nonpartisan think tank, the Urban Institute, Institute, has done a study that shows, uh, at least their work shows, that if you add a citizenship question, it could result in as many as 4 million people being undercounted in the census. Right. These are the estimates. And, you know, one former Census Bureau director told me that could be a conservative estimate. Uh, the major concern here is that the stakes are very high. When we're talking about the census, we're talking about money. We're talking about power. These numbers determine how many congressional seats and electoral college votes each state gets and hundreds of billions of dollars, an estimated $880 billion a year in federal funding for schools, for roads, for other public services, including Medicare and Medicaid. Those are that money is distributed based on census numbers. So the concern here 
is that if there is an undercount, specifically of immigrant communities, communities of color, that some parts of the country may not get their fair share in federal funding and political representation for the next 10 years. So serious, serious funding uh, uh, decisions at issue here. But, Hansi, Republicans still are making the argument that, in their words, there's always been some kind of citizenship question uh, on the census. Well, the first census back in 1790 did not include a question about citizenship status. Uh, the first time the census asked about citizenship status was back in 1820. And since then, it's been on and off the census. And it's really been asked of parts of the population, not every household necessarily, consistently. Uh, back in 1950 was the last time a citizenship question was included on the forms for every household. But that question back in 1950 was only asked of people born outside the U.S. You know, really, if you were to dig back into those uh, history books, uh, the census history books, you would realize that the 2020 census, if it were to include a citizenship question, it would be the first time the census in the United States has been used to directly ask for citizenship status of every person living in the country. Well, we will see where this goes. A lot of people are watching the courts. Thank you, Hansi Luang. You're welcome.